Hello and welcome back to Goblin Gaming. We're here today in Diablo 4 and we're going to be reviewing our Abattoir of Zier push build using Blizzard and Ice Spikes. And we did make a change. We took Blue Rose out and we put in X Falls Corroded Signet. It appears to have slightly more damage, but if you like the aesthetic of having Blue Rose in there more, go ahead and do that. It works almost as well. I just found I was able to eke out a little bit more damage with X Falls instead, but we do still want to be running the Ice Spikes because they do a significant amount of damage. Uh, this build is very similar to what we had before, but we'll do a quick review in case you didn't see the previous video. For the abilities, we're going to be taking Firebolt and we're going to be using the Enhancement for Firebolt so that we apply burning on all targets, basically all the time with our Blizzard. We're also going to be taking the Frozen Orb Enchantment, so we're proccing free Frozen Orbs. It'll be restoring mana when it hits targets. I accidentally, in the footage that's going to be playing to the left here in a moment, did not have that as the correct talent, so it was actually doing vulnerable, which we already had on enemies, so it was completely wasted, and we were a little bit mana starved. But it still ended up being fine because we were able to maintain through T-Bolt's work. Anywho, let's go ahead and put that footage playing for you guys. There you go. All right. Might be a little bit of overlap with the sound in the game. Let's turn that off. Yeah. Okay. Um. Then, down into the core skills, we're going to take one rank into Frozen Orb, and then over to Destructive Orb for Mana Restore. Three points into Potent Warding, and then I did put one point into Devastation, two points into Elemental Dominance, but you can actually move these somewhere else if you want to. They'll enhance the damage of your Frozen Orb a little bit, but they won't do anything for your Ice Spikes or your Talrosh, or your uh, X Falls, or any of the other main sources of damage, so... This may be better used in a different spot. I'm not 100% sure, but I did have it in there for this clear. Uh, over into defensive, we're going to take Flame Shield up to Enhanced Flame Shield, and then over to Shimmering Flame Shield, so we get a little bit extra movement speed and some health restore whenever we Flame Shield. Our Teleport is going to take Enhanced Teleport for cooldown reduction when we land on targets, and then Shimmering Teleport for a 30% damage reduction whenever we Teleport which we're going to be using offensively to get in the middle of enemies, also to prop our Kalash's ring, give us our damage reduction, and restore mana. Phew! It's a very multifaceted ability there. Ice Armor is going to be there to give us extra barrier. We take Enhanced Ice Armor so it, redu so it gives us more mana restoration, so we don't go out of mana all the time. And then we go Mystical Ice Armor so that the damage we deal while the barrier from Ice Armor is active, adds more barrier onto the stack. We take one point into Elemental Attunement for a lucky hit chance to reset the defensive cooldowns on hits. And then we're going to move on down into Conjuration. In Conjuration we're just taking Ice Blades down over into Summoned Ice Blades so that we get cooldown reduction whenever the Ice Blades attack on all of our other cooldowns, which is pretty much all of our other abilities. We're going to take one point into Align the Elements for a damage reduction that just kind of ramps over time. And then we're going to take Mana Shield so that every time we spend 100 mana, we gain a 21% damage reduction for 5 seconds. We're going to be spending 100 mana quite frequently, so this will be always up. Protection is going to give us a barrier whenever we use a cooldown, and as we said earlier, uh, 5 out of 6 of our abilities are cooldowns, so that's pretty much always up. It is important as you're playing through to kind of rotate through one at a time and not just piano all of them at once. Do this, and then wait a few seconds and do that, and then wait a few seconds and do that, then wait a few more seconds if your health starts dipping, then we do that, and that will reset all your other cooldowns. We'll get to that in a second. Anyway, moving down into Mastery, we're going to take two points into Icy Veil to extend the duration of our barriers. Three points into Cold Front so that we apply more chill with our Blizzards and our Frost Warps. Blizzard up into Enhanced Blizzard into Mage Blizzard so it lasts a little bit longer and hits a little bit harder. It's not really doing a significant portion of damage though, it's really the Ice Spikes that are doing the damage, so we really are just doing it so we get the extra duration. We're going to take Inner Flames up to Devouring Blaze. Devouring Blaze is going to give us a crit damage multiplier on anything that's burning, which is going to be everything all the time, thanks for our Firebolt enchantment. Moving down into the ultimate section, we're going to take Deep Freeze, up into Prime Deep Freeze, and then up into Supreme Deep Freeze. And we want to do this because it's going to give us a cooldown reset whenever we do Deep Freeze. It's going to fly Firebolt on everyone all over the place. It's going to give us more X-Fall procs, and it's also going to give us a little bit of barrier. Just baseline from the ability, plus some extra barrier from the protection talent. 
Permafrost is going to give us a little bit of damage multiplier against Elites. Core Frost is going to give us a little bit of damage multiplier against Chilled and Frozen. And then Frigid Breeze is going to give us extra uh, mana restore on Lucky Bit. I think it would actually be better to move these two points out here, down into these passes now that I'm kind of looking at it. So I think I'll do that because I'm still pushing with this build. So I'm going to do that right now. And I'm going to put two into Core Frost and then one into Actually, no. Three into Permafrost and two into Permafrost. We're going to put three points into Fiery Surge to give us mana regen. And then we're going to take Shatter as our key passive so that when we freeze targets, any damage we do to them is going to blow up in an area when they unfreeze or when they die. Let's take a look at the pieces of equipment we will be using for this build. So we're going to use Helm of Disobedience in order to give us uh, extra armor. The highest roll you can get on this, the better. Um, this is a very low roll that I have on there, but it is what it is. As far as stats on this particular piece of gear, you want to make sure you have total armor and max life as an absolute must. Lucky Hit with Barrier is really good because it's going to help scale up your damage significantly. And then the fourth stat is completely up to you. I chose to go with Intelligence. On the chest piece, you again must have total armor percent and max life in order to not die. I would also recommend you try to target getting raw damage reduction as well, and then a fourth just random damage reduction stat like I have here. I do like damage reduction from burning enemies because everything's always burning, so it's basically just like raw damage reduction, right? And that's it for our defenses, just those two items. Everything else from here on is offense. On the gloves, we're going to be taking Frozen Orbit aspects so that our Frozen Orb explodes two extra times and restores 15 mana for free on its autocast. The essential stats on this piece of gear are Lucky Hit Chance and Lucky Hit Chance to restore primary resource. You absolutely have to have those two. I would also recommend you get Crit Strike Chance if you can, and then the fourth stat is whatever you want. I just happen to have three ranks of Frozen Orb on this one. Evolve's Will is going to give us a damage multiplier whenever we go unstoppable. We go unstoppable with our dash for metamorphosis, with our teleport, and with our flame shield, as well as with our deep freeze. All of these things give us mana back. Esu's Heirloom is going to give us movement speed, as well as movement speed when we kill elites, some crit strike damage, some mana cost reduction, and extra critical strike based on our movement speed. What's not to love? My gloves are pretty meh. If I had more crit strike chance on, they'd be a lot better. Um, but right now I'm sitting at 25% crit strike chance before we apply SU there. And uh, it's a pretty significant buff for now. I'm just kind of run out there to kind of show you what it looks like when it's active. Um, but it's, it's pretty significant. It also gives us attack speed because it gives us movement speed, right? Oh, we're not out of town yet. There. Now we are. So yeah, our crit strike chance goes up to 31%, 54%, 52%. So we're up to about 52% crit strike chance when we're out of the world. And we're moving back. Pretty solid. Pretty solid. Gonna get back to the safety of town. Okay. Next up is the weapon. You want 925 wand. It's important that it's a wand so you have the implicit lucky hit chance. You want intelligence on it if possible, all stats as well. And then my other two stats are kind of meh here. Ideally, you're going to want crit strike damage, is much better than what I have. And you probably also want damage to crowd control, would be a lot better than what I have. For the aspects, we're going to want to run with Conceited to get extra damage multiplier whenever you have Barrier, which you should have pretty much all the time. And then on the weapon, we're going to run Storm, or on the offhand, we're going to run Storm Swell um, to give us even more damage multiplier whenever we're hitting vulnerable enemies while we have Barrier, and everything is always going to be vulnerable thanks to power setting up our Vampire Powers, which we'll go into in just a moment. For our necklace, this is the one of the two heavy hitters of the build. Glacial is going to make our blizzard spawn ice spikes, and as those ice spikes are spawning, they hit for a good chunk of damage. You can see them popping up here, then popping out of the ground. And the more of you, more of them you spam in one area, the more ice spikes you get. So it does behoove you to kind of stack it. 
a racial highest eye level that you can extract that from. It does scale the damage based on the eye level that you extract it from. And then put down your amulet to get 50% more x Falls is our other heavy hitter. This is going to give us a lucky hit chance to blow up for a big chunk of damage with anything that has a dot. It should be noted that we apply a dot from Flame Shield, we apply a dot from Firebolt, and we also apply a dot with Blizzard because Blizzard is its own dot. So it's three different dot sources that can all detonate separately, so you get quite a few detonations, and they range anywhere from 700,000 to 1.6 million. So pretty solid ring there. If you like the aesthetics more of Blue Rose, you could do that as well. It doesn't hit quite as hard. It typically is hitting for me from 400 to 600,000. Um, I think X Falls is probably a little bit better, but Blue Rose does give you a lucky hit chance to form even more ice spikes just on everything you're doing. So not 100% sure which is better, but it felt like X Falls was very slightly better when I was testing it. And then we run Talrosh's Iridescent Loop so that we have another 15x multiplier times 3, so it's really a 45 multiplier. Now normally I would run Pox here instead of Resilience to get another 15x, but I found I did need more damage reduction, so I put Resilience in there in addition to Sanguine Grace to give us even more defenses since we are lacking it on our equipment. We're going very offensive on our equipment, so we're going to offset that with our Vampire Powers. We're going to take a Curse cut, Touch, so everything always has Vampire Curse, and then we're going to take Prey on the Weak, so that anything that has Vampire Curse is vulnerable. There's also a 16x damage multiplier on that, but I guess that's bugged right now. I don't think they fixed it yet, but hopefully they do fix it before the season ends. And then we're going to take Metamorphosis to give us Unstoppable whenever we dodge roll. This is going to give us a damage multiplier from T-Bolt's Will, as well as Mana Restoration from T-Bolt's Will. So very, very good. Alright, let's go ahead and minimize the gameplay footage here. And we're going to go ahead and turn back on the in-game sound. Here we go. And we're going to take a look at our pair. So this is where the significant changes have come in from the last video. We are only running four boards instead of five, and we've kind of rearranged some things. So uh, we're going to grab Taste for Blood as our first uh, glyph, and then we're going to literally fill in every single slot. This is going to give us a 90x damage multiplier, as well as 10% non-physical damage, and 3% more intelligence, or sorry, 3% more all resist and 10 intelligence. So very, 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 very good. And the more you level this up, the better it is. Mine is only level four at the moment. So um, I'm still grinding, I'm still pushing. I've done a T7 on this build, but I'm sure as I level this up further, I can go much higher. So uh, yeah, kind of follow the path in here. I'll put a, uh, a build link for Mobilytics in the video description. So if you want to grab the exact pathing without having to look at the video, you can. Um, but the key aspects uh, that I've seen happening. Wait, what's in the happening sky, right now? Not a sliver of light, only winter's delight. The dawn gone missing, each promise undone. Each hour we wither till the sun comes again. This night without end, wind cold as the dead, the dark teams okay. with devils. That must have to do with the new seasonal event that dropped uh, yesterday. That must be the bard singing. Anyway, back to what we were doing. Um, yeah, so grab Taste for Blood. Of course, grab your yellow nodes to get those big damage bonuses and those all resist nodes. We're going to be grabbing Guarded on the right here so that we get damage reduction from vulnerable enemies. On the left, we're going to be grabbing Advantage and these nodes around them for the lucky hit chance. Very important. Legendary node, we're going to grab Frigid Fate for a 28x damage multiplier. You can go all the way up to 30, depending on what your bonus with cold is. And then in the rune slot here, we're going to grab Stalagmite, and we're just going to grab as much intelligence as we can, like so. And it's going to give you 128.7% damage on your Ice Spike once it's fully leveled. 
We're going to come up and over here so that we grab oppressives for some more vulnerable damage as well as damage reduction. And then even more damage reduction and more damage. Okay. I think actually rather than extra vulnerable damage, I'd take extra vulnerable damage reduction instead there. Moving over to the right here, we're going to be moving into our Icefall board. Now we're going to want to grab this Polar Rhyme here for more damage and non-physical damage. More non-physical damage here. I can move up and over to grab Keeper of Winter for damage reduction versus chilled targets, which is going to be everything all the time. We're going to move over and down to grab Icefall for another multiplier, 15x. And then up and over to grab Cryromancy as well as the nodes around it for more chill application. This and the talent that we grabbed earlier are the only ways to stack extra chill application, so this just makes things freeze much, much quicker. For our rune on this board, we're going to be grabbing Destruction, and we're not going to be able to really max this out because we don't quite have a whole lot of dexterity on this board, uh, but we need this board for these nodes, so we had to move it off of Burning Instinct and onto here, so it's only 134% damage multiplier as opposed to the 160-something that was before. But it's still good. It's still good. Moving up into our last board, we're going to be grabbing Enchantment Master to make our enchantments even stronger, make the Frost Orbs proc more often, make the Fire Bolts Enhancement tick for that much more damage. The biggest thing is the Frost Bolts more, more Frost Orbs. More Frost Orbs, more better. We're going to grab Suffused Resilience for more all resist and reduction on our damage over time. We're going to be grabbing Ruinous for non-physical damage and damage to elites, as well as the elite damage nodes around it and the non-physical nodes around it. We're going to be grabbing Elementalist for more non-physical damage, as well as max life, as well as max life nodes around it and the non-physical damage nodes around it. And then we're just going to jaunt on up to the last glyph, which is going to be reinforced. This is going to give us damage reduction while we have barrier, which it's very important to rotate slowly through your abilities so that you always have barrier up, otherwise you will feel like you're made of paper. This extra 15% does quite a lot of heavy lifting on the build. Also, because of the board that we're putting this on, we get an additional 25% non-physical damage from this defensive glyph. We're also getting 7.5% to all resist and an extra 25 intelligence. Yay! And then, of course, grab the yellow nodes to get more all resist, more non-physical damage, grabbing the non-physical damage on the windows as well, and then we're just activating our willpower requirements as well. Alrighty, and that is the build reworked for Avatar Zero. As I said, I've successfully cleared a tier 7 so far, and still working on climbing and leveling up the glyph. I think this build will probably cap out around T10 or T12, just from the amount of damage that I'm starting to take at T7. It is starting to get to a point where I have to be dodging things a little bit here and there, and I think as the damage continues to ramp up, we're not going to have any way to really get more damage reduction here. Uh, so we're probably just going to kind of cap out based on the amount of damage we're taking around there. You could theoretically move Disobedience off of the Helm and onto the Amulet, then move Glacial off of the Amulet and onto the Gloves, and drop the extra Frozen Orb Explosions to get a crap ton more armor. Might help you push a little bit higher, and then you could run, like, God Slayer on your helmet, um, or even better, a third defensive aspect, so that you can keep that total armor and that max life and that lucky hit chance, because those are all really important. Um, I guess the one that you would probably run would be... Um, Oh, I forget what's called. Ever Living. Yeah, Ever Living gives you damage reduction from vulnerable targets. Um, so that would probably be what you'd run here when you move Disobedience over onto the deck. So if you do that, you might be able to push even higher. Um, I'll have to experiment with it. But anyway, that is the build guide, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully it was helpful. Hopefully you enjoyed the last month of your season. And we're ready for Season 3 announcements. Let's go, devs. Thanks. Leave a like, favorite, share, subscribe. See you next time.